There's a new partnership between Fortis BC, Suncor Energy, and the Hazer Group, and they're going to be bringing a new technology to British Columbia to produce hydrogen from natural gas. So I'm going to talk to Dave Bennett, who's the Director of Renewable Gas and Low Carbon Fuels at Fortis BC, about the project. So welcome to the interview, Dave. Hey, it's great to be here, Markham. Thanks. Well, thanks for, for doing this, because I'm really interested, you know, there's a big debate about, you know, should we jump right into green hydrogen, which is very expensive, and, and should we do blue hydrogen made out of natural gas, but that has some, but you're doing turquoise uh, uh, hydrogen. Maybe you could give us an overview of the project, please. Sure. It's um, turquoise hydrogen is similar to blue in that you're actually getting hydrogen from methane. So methane is CH4. But when you're making blue hydrogen, when you liberate the, the carbon from, from the, the hydrogen, it forms carbon dioxide, and, which is a gas, and then you have to do something with it. So you, typically it's injected underground in some way. Turquoise hydrogen, you put the methane into a reactor in the absence of oxygen. So the, the carbon can't combine with oxygen and you introduce a catalyst to it. So you heat the, you still heat the methane, which is similar to what happens with blue hydrogen, get it to a very high temperature so it splits apart from the carbon. But when you introduce the catalyst, the, the carbon will bind to the catalyst and drop out of the process. So you're left with uh, hydrogen and then solid carbon rather than carbon gas, carbon dioxide gas. So it's easier to deal with the, with the carbon when it's a solid than when it's a gas. Now, there's a lot of interest these days, and I've done some interviews with experts about uh, turning carbon into materials. So uh, in the case of Capital Power in Alberta, they've got a little pilot project where they're doing taking CO2 and making uh, carbon nanotubes. Uh, the Chinese apparently are quite advanced in terms of turning CO2 and carbon into materials. And it, well, is something like that contemplated for this supply of carbon? I mean, that's not the sole that's not the sole reason. The pre reason for doing the project is actually producing the hydrogen. But I would agree with you. I think that, you know, if this industry takes off, um, that this carbon that's produced from these types of processes, and there's more than one company that's looking at doing this similar sorts of thing, that there'll be a carbon supply that we haven't seen before, and people will figure out what to do with it. So there's all kinds of things. You can make battery anodes, you can mix it with concrete and asphalt to make it more resilient so i think the carbon actually is the thing that we're not paying a lot of attention to right now but it actually could be a very valuable byproduct of the process well let's talk about the value of the hydrogen because now you folks have, uh, have already announced a, a project where you're going to be taking renewable gas biogas and in, and and blending it with uh uh, with your natural gas in new subdivisions down in Vancouver. So is it the same? Are you contemplating doing the same with the turquoise hydrogen? Yeah, fairly similar. Um, basically, we've been working on the renewable gas, uh, renewable natural gas, biomethane, for the last 10 years. And, you know, we've had a program in place. Um, the current iteration of it, which is before the Utilities Commission right now, is basically any new customers that come onto the system would get allocated biogas. So they wouldn't add to our carbon footprint, any new homes or businesses that start using natural gas. The thing with biomethane is it comes from a biogenic source, so it's carbon neutral, but it's methane. So it's exactly the same as the methane that we get you know, from conventional natural gas. It's not distinguishable. So you don't have to do anything different when you introduce uh, RNG. With hydrogen and turquoise hydrogen, all the different types of producing it produces the same thing. It is a different gas, so it has different qualities. And we're gonna to have to think about how we're gonna use it differently, but ultimately that's what, what we're trying to solve the same problem, which is lowering the carbon footprint of our gas system. So we think that moving um, biomethane and moving hydrogen, that's what we do is move gas around. Um, initially, uh, hydrogen can be blended with natural gas and and then just be used exactly the same way as natural gas. And in fact, with this project, that's what we think we'll be doing is we're just making a little bit of hydrogen. So we'll be blending it into our system. Right. I understand you're going to be making about 2,500 tons of hydrogen per year uh, at Suncor's uh, Burrard Inlet, uh, Burrard Terminal site. Uh, now, 
What percentage of hydrogen can you blend into the CH4 that you're currently moving? Well, we we think we can we can go up to about 20%. Initially, we're looking about 5% by volumes. I've seen estimates even up even higher than 20%, um, you know, up to 30%. If you get more than you need to start thinking about your appliances because they would behave differently with a different type of mix of gases in it. So that's why there's a limit in terms of the amount that you can put in. But we're initially looking at 5% by volume, and then we would work that up over time. What about the pipes themselves? Uh, there's been a discussion on, on my social media accounts about the extent to which existing pipes, whether they be big pipelines uh, transporting you know natural gas a long way, or it's a distribution pipelines into our homes, just how much hydrogen, if any, uh, what percentage of hydrogen those pipes can handle without leaking? Yeah, and that's something we'll be we'll be studying. Um, the most of our distribution system, when once you get down to the distribution part that goes out to your house, that's that's a plastic pipe. So that doesn't have issues with with uh, the same issues as steel pipe. But steel pipe is something we'll be looking very closely at. But we believe that you'll be able to blend this in and manage it. I mean, there are hydrogen pipelines that are exist today. So you, if you design for it, you can do it. And we believe that you can repurpose um, natural gas lines. And there are other companies in the world working on that. So either blended hydrogen or up to, you know, higher blends or even 100% hydrogen and repurpose gas pipelines. Now, um, Hazer uh, has a, what's to, which you guys have described as an innovative methane pyrolysis technology. Is that technology does it, uh, create does it create hydrogen that's competitively priced? Like our uh, BC customers uh, going to see their bill go up because it's got this hydrogen blended into it? Well, the hydrogen is likely to be more expensive than conventional natural gas. Um, what we're hoping to to be able to do is create things that are similar in cost to what our biomethane is so more expensive but still competitively priced the gr great promise of turquoise hydrogen is that because it doesn't need as much energy as electrolysis so that's the green hydrogen you hear about it uses electricity and water it uses a tremendous amount of energy so it, it can be quite expensive to 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 make blue hydrogen on the other hand is less expensive to make but then you have to be able to store the co2 somewhere so we think that we can get to the point where the turquoise will sit somewhere in between, and that'll make it very cost-effective solution. Obviously, that one other real advantage of this is that you can put one of these machines uh, near your customers, so you can use all your existing uh, gas and methane natural gas network to still move the gas there, and then you just turn it into hydrogen just before you're about to use it, which is which is quite um, attractive as well. Uh, well, Dave, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. And good luck with the pilot project. Thanks very much. I've enjoyed talking to you today.